What do you want to be when you grow up? It's a question your parents probably ask you all the time. Although my parents accepted the answer of future princess, I soon realized that may not be a realistic goal. When you're in high school, it's the perfect time to start looking at possible career choices. And trust me, planning now for life after high school can save you a lot of time, money, and energy in the future. It's time to start thinking about what classes you might want to take if you want to enroll in a certificate, a university, or a two-year college setting. And determining those now can really help you be well on your way to reaching your future career goals and dreams. Then again, maybe you have no idea what you want to do after high school. And that's okay. I didn't either. Don't worry. In the next couple minutes, we're going to talk to you about your interests and hobbies and how those can help you find future careers. We're also going to talk about science, technology, engineering, and math as possible paths. Before we get going here, I want to teach you a new term. The term is STEM. It stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Career fields are growing and employers are more and more interested in people with experience or training in STEM areas. People working in these STEM careers are making products smaller, faster, and more environmentally friendly. Let's look at a few examples. I've put together a couple of slides here that will show how technology has changed over time thanks to the help of people in science, technology, engineering, and math field areas. This is a gas pump, an old one and a more current one that people can pay at the pump using their credit card. What job do you think the person that designed this worked in? Was it possibly an engineer? Did a software engineer make the software that reads your credit card? Did these jobs use math or technical skills to help develop this? How about this? Did you ever have a Walkman? Do you have an iPod? Ever wonder who created that iPod? How can the software do so many cool things? Computer programmers, computer scientists, and software engineers probably had something to do with those technologies. How about computers? Over time, computers have gotten smaller, more portable, and can do many more things than they used to be able to. Today, we even have cell phones that have computer capabilities. The Xbox is a perfect example of how STEM careers are intertwined. First, computer engineers, programmers, and other people in computer science and technology careers design the software that runs the Xbox. Hey, and don't forget to mention the artists, programmers, and developers who actually go ahead and make the game. And the engineers who developed the controller and case designs. People in the math field go and do research to see how much they can sell the Xbox for and then estimate how much of a profit the company can make. Now apply that exact same thinking to this iPhone or even this Tickle Me Elmo. If you are really into gaming but typing code into a computer is not one of your strengths, there are plenty of other STEM careers that are involved in the process that might match your interests. Now excuse me while I pwn this noob. Yeah, right. You couldn't hit me with your auto-aim turned on. So as you can see, there's a lot of different jobs out there. But how do you know which one's right for you? We're going to get started by thinking about your strengths, interests, and hobbies. If it's handy, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and pencil right now. I'll give you a second. Okay, what we're going to do is literally create a list of your hobbies and interests. If you don't have a pen and paper handy, go ahead and make a mental list. I'm going to start mine as well. Great! Now we're going to watch a series of interviews about people who took their hobbies and interests and turned them into jobs. While watching the videos, I want you to think about your list and how you could turn that into your dream career. My name is Jonathan Tudino and I am a medical assistant. Uh, medical assistants do a lot of different things. Uh, mainly is rooming patients, taking patient history and vital signs, taking blood pressure, 
pulse, respiration rate, things like that, and then relaying that to the doctor and putting it in their medical chart. I am a type 1 diabetic, and in all of my nurses, doctors, everybody that I've worked with in the past have never been a type 1 diabetic, and I wanted to be able to go into a field where I could relate more with the patients than what I have received in the past. Um, I didn't figure out that this is what I wanted to do until after two and a half years of college. So I changed my major up and, and that's quite common to go from, oh, this is what I want to do. And then you change it and change it and change it. And finally I found what I really wanted to do and this is how I feel like I can best help other people. A lot of classes for this position are very technical. They're very hands-on, um, which is what I like. It's not a bunch of general education. They give you, you know, math, English, and reading, and then you have to go out into the world and do something. They're very technical, very job-oriented, so that when I do go into this field, I know exactly what I have to do. And that's what my degree is. It's a technical degree, but I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Very hands-on, and they teach you what you need to know instead of going out and guessing. And that's what I liked about it. The training itself, or the classes themselves, it was a two-year program. Um, basically one year for all of your core classes, your technical classes, um, lab skills, clinical skills, things like that. And then another year for, you do have to take some general education courses as with anything, but the main majority of it took about a year, year and a half. Well, I think I started looking for schools and programs and things like that, maybe not necessarily the medical assisting program, but just programs in general my sophomore year. Um, I wanted to make sure I had all the information, I had everything squared away that I needed to as far as how I'm going to pay for it, you know, where is it, you know, how am I going to get there, where am I going to live, things like that. There's a lot of preparation involved um, and I started like my sophomore year as far as applying and, and uh, doing research and, and things like that. So it, and I started early. Medical field related anything, you want to, your core classes are science classes. Um, it's very big on science. I took biology, physics, chemistry. I mean, any science course that I could think of, I took. Um, and relating that back now, I took physics in high school. I'm taking a radiology class now, which is physics based. So because I had that pre-knowledge, it's a lot easier now. So if you do anything medical, you're gonna do science. It's gonna make things a lot easier in the long run um, as far as the two-year program goes, just because you have that base knowledge. So anything medical, you definitely want to go science. Um, there's lots of other courses or programs similar to mine that are a two-year program. You got your registered nursing, your licensed practical nursing. There's a whole different variety that do different things within the medical facility. So if you're not one that wants direct patient contact, you don't have to have direct patient contact. You can go into a lab job and work in a lab and do blood work. There's so many different things that you can do. So if you're not a people person, you can still go into the medical field. Planning early, keeping your head down and pushing through are two of the huge things. It's gonna get frustrating. Any college course, no matter where you go, is gonna get frustrating. But having the determination to get it done will help you through in the long run. And the sooner you get it done, the sooner you're on to bigger and better things. So get it done, start planning. Definitely. Well, my name is Kristen and I'm a stylist at Fantastic Sam. Well, our job responsibilities are in the line of grooming, cutting hair, coloring, perming, anything that you can possibly imagine that deals with hair. A lot of it is you need to just kind of be creative when it comes to hairstyling, kind of get to know the person. You need to have very good verbal skills, communication, to be able to talk back and forth with your client in order for them to feel really good in the end about how they're leaving the salon because they know that they understood what I wanted because they knew how to cut my hair. You know, it fits me, it looks great, I feel great. I've always loved playing with hair. Any girl that has dolls will play with hair. They'll either cut it, make them look all crazy or really fun, and some will just style it, put in pigtails, ponytails, braids, all of it, but they're transforming the doll into something else, making it pretty or cute or fun and crazy. Um, and being a stylist, you kind of have to know everything about that. So I mean, it's just the matter of making people feel good, and then after doing it on the dolls, and then actually working on family and friends, and just them saying, oh, that looks really good, and that just makes you feel good, and you kind of want to say, well, is that something I want to do later on? Um, but senior year, I finally realized, you know what, I know that this is a profession that I'm really going to enjoy. It's something that I love doing, why not go for it? You know, you're making people feel really good about themselves and that's making, that's a rewarding feeling for you and for your client. Any employer for the 
salon industry requires that you do formal training in a cosmetology school. Um, there's, they're all over in the states, just depending on where you want to go and where you want to be located. But typically, it's a 10-month program, and they have all the classes that you need when it comes to col coloring, cutting, perming, everything. But they require that you get your salon or that you get your cosmetology license in order to get hired anywhere. Well, the difference between the schooling and the license is first you need to complete the course, the schooling, which is 10 months typically. And as soon as you're done with the schooling, they have you perform a test in the end. So, And if you can pass that test, you get your cosmetology license. So completing the schooling, being successful with that, and then getting done with the license and passing that test, you are now free to fill out applications at different employers and see who would want to take you in and everything. I actually went to Regency Beauty Institute down in Burnsville. It was a 10 month program down there for me. I love this school simply because after I graduated and I got my cosmetology license, I was able to go back to them and say, you know, I'm done with everything, I have my license, can you help me find a job? Something that I chose because I, I'm very creative. I love making people feel good about themselves. They can come in and have a bad day at the office. They sit down in your chair and they can just spell out everything that they want and you're there to listen and that's perfectly fine. And then at the end of the day when you're done with their haircut or color or perm, they say, you know what? This was a really nice experience. I look wonderful. I feel better about myself and they feel good and you know that's a rewarding experience for yourself. To me, it makes my day. It makes my night. And it's something that I love to do. It's I'm making somebody else feel much better about themselves and going from a bad day to a good day, that's something that you want to be able to do and it's really nice to see. My name is Jeff Okerstrom. I'm 35 years old and work as an interactive designer at Pacer Center. I design media-rich interactive websites that incorporate animation, audio, and video using a program called Flash. My job is to figure out how to interpret information and design a solution that is visually interesting so that people can enjoy and easily understand it. My choice of careers did not come easily to me. I had always been interested in math and science, but I hadn't found an exciting way to apply that knowledge until I started taking art classes. After taking several painting, drawing, sculpture, and art history classes, I took a computer art class. I quickly found this class to be the perfect mix of math, science, craft, and creativity that I was looking for. It wasn't until my third year of college that I enrolled in the graphic design program, which I went on to get a degree in. What I enjoy most about my career as a designer is the creativity and challenge. The challenge is figuring out how to make an idea work artistically, conceptually, or even mathematically. If you are interested in a career as a designer, art and creativity are a must. But science and math definitely come into play. I found that the more rounded your education and experiences are, the more you have to draw from to come up with unique ideas. Last but not least, as a designer, you need to learn to take criticism well, as art is looked at differently by everyone, and you will always run into someone that has their own opinion on what it, you have created. My name is John McDonald. I'm 28 years old, and I work as a design engineer at Honeywell. At my job, I work with a team of engineers to design electronic controls used for heating applications, such as water heaters and warm air furnaces. Every day, I use computers as well as math and science principles to come up with new ideas on how to improve our products. For instance, we may take an existing control and come up with a cheaper way to accomplish the same thing. Or, we might design a new user interface that will make it easier for our customers to use. I really enjoy going to work every day because there is always a new challenge and no two days are ever the same. I also get to be creative in trying to solve problems in ways that people haven't thought of before. And it's very exciting when we release a new product that I've helped to design. I went to a four-year college and graduated with a degree in computer engineering. I had an internship at Honeywell for over two years while I went to school, which helped prepare me for my current position. Growing up, I had always enjoyed working with computers and taking things apart to see how they work. So I had always planned on a career in the field of technology. In high school, I did well in math and science classes, probably because there was always clear right and wrong answers. Those classes helped prepare me with the skills I needed 
to be successful in college and eventually find a job doing things that I enjoy. A fellow engineer once told me that he feels like he gets paid to work on fun hobby projects all day. And although that sounds funny, in many ways it sums up why I enjoy being an engineer. My best piece of advice would be to try and find a job doing what you truly enjoy. It will make going to work every day a lot easier. Hi, my name is Kashimana Ahua. I am 27 years old and I work as a laboratory assistant at Alina Cytogenetics Laboratory. My daily duties as a lab assistant include preparing chemical reagents, setting up cell cultures, growing cells, harvesting the cells, and staining the cells for the cytogenetic technologists. Cytogenetic technologists then look at the cells for any abnormalities. Sometimes I help with data entry and whatever tasks the lab technologists that I work with need done. Basically, I help the lab run smoother and this is one of the things I like about my job. It gives me the opportunity to keep things different and exciting by working with several people in the lab. I've worked in a healthcare laboratory environment for the last five years. I got interested in the healthcare field because biology was my favorite subject in school. I like the stories about life, how we function, what makes us tick, and I also wanted to help people. Biology isn't the only topic that helps when you work in the laboratory. The other areas of knowledge I draw from include chemistry, mathematics, genetics, and physics. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomedical Sciences that provided me with the background and skills needed to acquire this particular job. However, there are several lab assistant jobs that do not require a college degree, although a few advanced courses in biology, chemistry, and laboratory techniques will put you ahead of the competition. Some laboratories are willing to train you into a lab assistant position and some will train you to become laboratory technologists or scientists. There is going to be a shortage of laboratory support and technologists in the coming future, so if you're interested in the field, I would suggest studying any of the sciences. Be curious about what goes on in the healthcare industry. Read articles in journals or magazines. Watch Nova Science clips that come on TBT and even some shows like House, Bones, and CSI give you an idea of what happens in the laboratories. Even though we may be behind the scenes, unlike doctors or nurses, we are very necessary because without us, the doctors and nurses would not be able to provide the correct diagnosis or give the correct care. I hope those interviews have inspired you to start thinking more about your future career path. Keep that list of hobbies and interests handy. And as you come up with different careers, you can match them up and add them to your list. If you have access to a computer and the internet, try visiting iSeek.org. iSeek.org provides information about jobs, career forecasts, average salaries, and educational requirements. And remember, big career fields like video game development and medical careers offer a variety of jobs to choose from with varying degrees of education and requirements needed.